if you want to get ahead, get a hat. And in this case, the hat is an ANH-15 flying helmet of World War II vintage. And Star Wars fans may well be aware that this was used as the core of the helmets used by the Rebel Commandos in Return of the Jedi. And the purpose of this video is to teach you how to make the so-called donut that goes around this to form the, the main body of the helmet. And just as a word of advice, I began by experimenting with paper and card. And I wholeheartedly suggest that you do the same if you're going to attempt to follow these uh, instructions because this provides me with a ready-made set of templates before I go on to using plastic. Paper and card are cheap. I can modify them and I can throw them away and I've not lost anything. So anyway, on to the main instructions. I'm going to start off by making this piece here that will form the top of the donut. And this wants to sit about 50 millimeters above this hemline here at the front of the flying helmet. The first stage is to be able to create this hole in the middle and make it the size and shape of your head at the right level. And the easiest way to do that is to put on the flying helmet and then bend a piece of wire around your head at about the right level. Just take it halfway from the very front to the very back and that will enable you to create a curve that's about the right size and shape to match your head. So from that wire curve we can now create this template which is basically a cross section of your head which is sit at the right level for the top of the donut. And it's easiest to create this as a negative in that you cut a hole in a sheet of cardboard and you can just sit this over your head to make sure it's right. And as you can see here I've altered this by sticking some card back in after I made it slightly too large the first time. And this really is what I was talking about earlier in using card and paper prototypes first because I can make as many adjustments to this as I want and I'm not wasting valuable plastic. To produce the top piece of the donut, I've stuck the template to a piece of plastic card. I've actually marked on a center line because that will come in useful later when I'm putting on some supports. Then I've drawn around the template exactly. So that will then produce this interior edge here. And for the exterior edge, I've offset that by 30 millimeters. And to get this offset all the way around, all I did was I took a disc of cardboard with a 30 millimeter radius, poked a hole in the middle, so I could then set that down next to the template, push a pencil through the hole, and as I gently move around, I got a line it's exactly 30 millimeters from the edge of the template and that has produced the outside edge of the top piece of the donut. With the top piece of the donut now made I'm going to move on to the matching bottom piece. Now on the card prototype this was a single piece that runs all the way around the donut and it's folded slightly at the center lines which allows the front of the helmet to taper upwards. In plastic card, what I'm instead going to do is make it as two sort of semi-circular or semi-oval sections. And for that, I'm going to repeat the process of sticking the donut to a piece of plastic card. You can see I've marked on some center lines and offsetting by 20 millimeters this time. And I've got the other half marked out there. And now I'll cut those two pieces out separately. Now that I have the upper and lower parts of the donut, I need to connect these together. And if I go to the cardboard prototype, you can see that I've used a number of struts around the inside to get the spacing and support correct. Now, these struts are 30 millimeters wide at the top. They slope down and outwards by the 20 millimeters that I offset the bottom part of the donut by. And then the bottom is 20 millimeters wide to fit with the bottom part of the donut. I'll use nine identical parts like this around the back. And then at the front, where the front half tapers up, 
I've got another strut that I intend to modify. I've got a line marked on here where I'm going to cut through. And this meets the slope 20 millimeters above this baseline here. And it's angled so that if you project this baseline further this way and this line further this way, they would meet at a point. So that line is equal to the height of this front section stood vertically. So that's from here to here. And that means once it's bent upwards, that will still meet the front. Now that I have the frame assembled, it's time to make the side pieces. I'm going to do these in two halves, um, one round the back and one at the front. And for this part, even if you've not already done a card and paper prototype like I've done, use card and paper first to plan out the size and shape of the plastic pieces you'll need. Uh, paper first, just wrap it around. It'll give you the size and shape of your trim around the edges. Then use that as a pattern to repeat the process in cardboard because cardboard's got the same sort of thickness as you're going to need on the plastic card and you can make your corrections then. I've taken these side pieces from the card and paper prototype and here we've got the rear piece and this is the front piece. You'll notice the rear piece has got this indentation in it for the details that go right at the back. And to produce this, first of all, I marked off a section which sits from halfway between this centre line to the edge, both sides and the top and bottom. And then this line here sits about five millimetres beneath what would be the midpoint line stretching all the way around. And now these I have drawn round and I can now cut them out of the plastic card. I now have the front and back plates made of plastic card and I need to bend these into shape to get them to fit onto the frame. Now, although plastic card is flexible to a certain degree, it isn't sufficiently flexible that I can just bend it by hand and make it fit. So what I'm gonna to have to do is soften the plastic um, first by heating it up. I've now got the front and back pieces bent roughly into shape. They'll flex the rest of the way to allow me to glue them into position. Uh, I applied heat to these just using a hairdryer and it is time consuming you have to keep going over it again and again and uh, a bit of tape to hold it in place over bent before it springs back can help but before I glue these in place I need to cover part of the back of the frame with a thin sheet of plastic card that will cover the indentation in the back plate and all I'm going to do is very roughly glue this around so it will cover more than enough area, then trim off the excess card. And because I'm only using half millimetre thick here, I can just bend it into shape, unlike the two millimetre thick I've used everywhere else. I've now stuck the front and back panels onto the frame of the donut, and I did this using super glue initially. Um, taped that up overnight to make sure it was properly cured and I've just added a bit of hot melt glue top and bottom to reinforce the joins. I've also sanded off the edges so they meet the top and bottom pieces of the donut as closely as possible. There are a few gaps and imperfections of course but I'll fill these with milliput later on because next I'm going on to the detail panel at the back. With the front and back plates now in place I'm going to move on to doing the detailed plate inside the indentation at the back of the helmet and for that I prepared another paper prototype to get the size and shape correct uh, and I've cut this so that it is, sits five millimeters above the base of the bottom of the donut. Then I've also marked on a total of eight areas where I'm going to have slots cut in it 
these are six millimeters wide and they have a, a spacing of six millimeters between each and they're about the center of the, the plate and then I've rounded them off at the top and again they are about five millimeters from the top of that plate and here we have the rear detail plate made from one millimeter thick plastic card and then glued into the indentation now this is actually the second one of these i made because for the first one i was working off a rather poor photograph that only showed four slots rather than eight so i made one with four slots on and glued that in place and continued with the donut until it was pointed out to me that i was missing four slots so from this point on, you will actually see only four slots um, at this location on the donut. With the rear detail plate now in place, I'm going to move on to the lower section of the donut. And this needs a supporting plate that stretches between the two points on the inside where it starts to taper. So what I've done is again, I'm going to a paper prototype first to get the size right and i've cut a strip of paper that is 45 millimeters wide this will give me a lip of 20 millimeters that i can fix to the struts on the inside of the donut and then a width of 25 millimeters protruding beneath it now i want it to taper at each side so it's, it won't might not exactly follow that angle but it will be almost and for that I folded the prototype in half and then in half again and this quarter distance at each end is the amount by which it will taper and so now I want to duplicate this in one millimeter thick plastic card the bottom section support is now fitted. Uh, I've done this as two pieces actually because it was too long to be done as a single length, but that doesn't matter. Uh, and then I've added some supporting struts on the outside. I've added five of them equally spaced all around from the point where it tapers at this side to the point where it tapers again on this side. And now I'm going to cover the section from here all the way around to here just as I did with the main side pieces so again I'll use a paper prototype to get the size and the shape and then I'll make a, a proper piece out of half millimeter thick plastic card with the lower section now covered in plastic card all that's left to do on the donut is to fill all the gaps with milliput or some other similar uh, material and then this is ready to be painted and here we have the finished and painted uh, donut as you can see i've uh, i've put some weathering on this a bit to make it look used all of the ones uh, i've seen photos of from return of the jedi had um, at what looked like damage to the paintwork so i've included that as well obviously i've gone for the green used on endor i think a similar sort of donut was also featured in um the recent rogue one film that's painted brown um all right that's it feel free to have a go at making one yourself i'm currently working on putting together instructions that i hope to have up on my website uh, in the near future thanks for watching